All right. A lot of people, when you ask them about LARP, they'll explain it as it's kind of like Dungeons and Dragons, but you go out in the real woods and you hit real people with real sticks. Have you ever asked the question, why don't LARPs have dungeons? Well, I'm going to show you how they can. Alright, so dungeons. Dungeons and LARPs. How do we do this? Challenge is a lot of LARPs, uh, you don't have your own, might not have your own storage space, you might not have a place that's really easy to set up, those kind of things, um, which admittedly is a challenge. Now we're fortunate enough that the venue that we host our LARP at gives us a great uh, uh, barn here, um, but there's also a way that you can do it with portable panels that can be brought in and taken out at the same time. So, not everybody is as lucky to have a unit such as this. Uh, that was an old stage prop that was used for uh, something in TV and film or something or other, and, and eventually we ended up getting our hands on it. But what I want to show you today are these items right here. These are panels that we've been able to make that are attached together real easy. They just attach with zip ties and we can build massive mazes with these. I'm going to link the website where I got the idea from and uh, we've made a few adaptations and, uh, and changes. But uh, yeah, so this is the dungeon wall idea that we're going to uh, look at today. Okay, so how do we build these things? Um, what we did is we built 30 panels. Um, 15 of them are 4 feet by 8 feet and the other uh, 15 are 6 by 8 feet. And we measured it out so the smaller ones nest right inside the uh, six foot panels. Makes it a lot easier for storage, takes up half the amount of space because we can just stack them inside each other and put them up against the wall. Um, now depending on how, what type of uh, vehicle you have or if you have to move them off site and onto site uh, for storage, uh, that'll change how you're going to want to do the measurements. But basically it all works out pretty much the same. You're building a square frame, which we'll show you in a moment, and uh, we used electrical staples on the corners, so they just zip tie together. The, uh, the original design called for you know, wing nuts and screws and bolts and all that kind of thing, but uh, uh, it's also an exterior design, which uh, uh, is something that I'm going to get into eventually. Um, but for now, we wanted to start with something that we could just build inside the barn to create an immersive environment for our players uh, to be able to get lost in and uh, to be able to hopefully die in. I mean, hopefully survive. Uh, so <laughs> what we did is uh, we went to our local plastic supplier and we bought uh, large rolls of uh, uh, plastic sheeting and we just stapled them around the outside of the frame. Now we were able to get these for uh, $10 a roll Canadian, but give us a little bit of a deal because we bought a whole bunch and they are 3.5 mil, um, 10 feet by 25 feet, which is where the math came out for our four by six panels. Um, because when we do them four by six, it works out exactly so we can just lay them side by side, staple it down, cut them in half, and we have very little plastic waste. Um, wasting money is not something most people can afford to do when they're building a LARP or when they're building a dungeon, so we want to make it as easy as possible. Um, most of the wood uh, we got was uh, uh, recycled, and uh, we took two by fours and ripped them into thirds uh, on a table saw. Uh, that gave us a lot more value for our wood. We did have to buy about 10, yeah, I think we bought 10 two by fours and uh, the rest was all recyc recycled wood that we got from friends, uh, that sort of thing. So then we put them all together and put a corner of plywood uh, in the corner for reinforcement and that makes them plenty stable enough for, for indoor use. Um, outdoor use, obviously you might want to make them a little bit more uh, sturdy, um, but uh, who knows, these might hold up uh, just well enough. Okay, so what we've done is we've taken two tables and put them eight feet, a little over eight feet apart to give ourselves a nice working space. We've split our parts up into two piles on all sides, so we have the top pieces at one end and the side pieces um, uh, laid beside the table, which makes it really easy to start moving things around. And uh, all we got to do is throw the boards up on the table, line them up, and uh, away we go. So once we have everything laid out and lined up, what we do is we tap our corner pieces with a drill bit, that way we're not gonna split our wood.
drop a single screw in there. And then once we're done that, once we've done all through all four corners, then we put our little corner of plywood on top and then we just use a stapler and attach that on there. Um, I like to get everything, make sure everything's square um, before we, have, we uh, staple our corners on because once those are on, they don't like to move very much. Okay, now that we've got all four corners in there, we just wanna make sure that that's all square and lined up. And then we staple on our plywood corner. Sometimes the staples don't go all the way in, so then you just give them a little tap and sink them flush. So here we are. Uh, basically, it took us about an hour to assemble these 15 panels, and uh, we're now laying them out on the floor and putting the plastic on. Um, it's important to uh, remember when you buy your plastic, that's where you're going to get your measurements from um, as far as how wide you can build the panels. Um, like I was saying, you want to place them or make them so they're, the smaller panels can fit inside the larger panels. So they're about two inches shorter and that way you can uh, stack them inside of one another and save a lot of storage space. So what we're doing is we're laying out the plastic over top of the panels and then throwing some staples in and then cutting each individual panel apart from each other and then we just reinforce that with tape. All right. Here we are, we're getting pretty close to game and time in now. And uh, I managed to uh, sneak in, sorry I don't have my other camera uh, up and running at the moment, uh, low batteries and that kind of thing, but I just want to show you quickly how our panels turned out. It took me about five minutes to, uh, well maybe about 15 minutes to get them laid out uh, in the pattern that I wanted on the floor. But basically, they're all freestanding, as you can see, made massive rooms. These rooms are about, um, the panels, like I said, we made 30 panels, and uh, these rooms are about 20 feet across, easily. Hallways, every once in a while I just put a strut to uh, brace them so they're uh, a little stronger. We've got secret passageways. Everything's just connected with zip ties. So I can close this up like this. Nice little hidey hole room in the hallway. They move and close really easy so we can do um, things like uh, you know ambushes and change hallways around. And uh, basically with 30 panels I've made two 20 by 35 rooms, hallways, we've got a little jail cell here, um, falling traps with spikes on them, and uh, yeah, um, all together um, I set up all these panels pretty much by myself, I had one helper for about 20 minutes, half an hour, and uh, I set the whole thing up in about an hour and a half. Uh, on my own. So they're really easy to move around and a fantastic way to make immersive dungeons. Um, if I wanted to make this into uh, a maze, I'd have lots of, uh, lots of wall panels to move around and make work. But uh, yeah, so we'll see how the players like it. Um, I'm going to uh, put the uh, plans uh, with measurements for how I made these panels uh, in the link below. And uh, yeah, immersive dungeon. 100 bucks, recycled material. Yay.